This is the hull pro curve, and this is what should come to mind when you think banana blade. The shape is very thick at the heel, almost max height, but then it gets super, super thin at the toe, and the lie is just crazy. If you have the puck near the heel of the blade, it's more like a 5, but if you push it to the toe, it's more like a lie 7. Between the semi-square toe and the way that this curve opens up, it's very similar to a toned-down line A curve. The only real difference is the hull curve is a straight wedge, whereas the line A curve actually does have some hook to it. It's definitely a huge wedge. If the OB curve is a pitching wedge or a loft wedge, and the P92 is a 7 iron, I would put this around an 8 or a 9 iron. In the line A video, you can see the similarities with the P92, but when you look at the hull curve here, it's completely different. It's just a straight wedge, the lie is completely different, the blade shape is completely different, everything about this is different. There's almost no similarities with the P92. Looking at the blade shape comparison again, the hull, complete banana. It's thick near the heel, super thin at the toe, nothing like the P92. You can see here just how thin that toe gets on the hull curve, but Brett Hull designed this curve specifically for shooting. You can shoot from really any angle with this curve. He was a master of his craft, and he came up with this for a reason. The lie is there for a reason. The toe shape is there for a reason. Everything on this curve, he designed specifically so he could improve his shot. So I've been talking all this nonsense about how this is like the ultimate shooter's curve, so let's see it in action now. I started this video by telling you how similar this curve was to the line A curve with the semi-square toe, the way it sort of opens up and how it's wedge-like. If I never tried the line A curve, I would like this hull curve a lot more. I'm definitely getting the shots off here, they're going where I want them, but it's just not as quick and easy as the line A curve makes it to shoot. There's definitely an adjustment period with this curve. In this first shot where I'm aiming for the left side, the shots are definitely going off, they're not bad. But I'll show you in the second shot how much better they are, and this one goes off the crossbar. I had to wait for a second because it was headed straight for the windshield of my car. Now here's the second shot, after I've had some time to get used to it, and just watch this first one. Just perfect, such a quick release, so fast. It's sort of just the way you have to shoot. I got it near the end here. You just have to sort of snap it off the middle of the blade, sort of towards the toe, and it works wonders. Throughout these videos, I've been praising heel curves for their ability to throw saucer passes. Since this has a lot of loft to it, it should be pretty good. But... I don't know if that's the case here. Overall, uh, that first one was pretty nice. Some good hang time there. And I feel like it's better than the OB for sure, but not really as good as the Line A. The Line A has that nice square heel modification to make everything super crispy. This doesn't have that. It's still pretty good. Better than a P92. Better than an OB. Not as good as the Line A. Brett Hull made this curve to master shooting, not stick handling. But it does have that unique shape of the blade and the unique lie, so maybe it'll be good. I found that with the shorter blade as well as that sort of unique lie, it's actually pretty good to stick handle with this thing. The one thing that I don't like is since this is just such a straight wedge with no real curve to it, you don't cup the puck that nicely, so it's a little awkward in that sense. Not really for stick handling, but that's going to impact us more when it comes to trying to dangle and sort of pull toe drags, that sort of thing. But overall, if we're just talking about straight up stick handling, then I think it's pretty good. I, I really like the lie, I really like the blade shape for stick handling. It's sort of like the line A, but again, it doesn't cup the puck quite as nicely. I just mentioned how that straight up wedge curve with no real hook to it is going to really impact us when it comes to dangles, so let's see how that actually does impact us right now. Trying to pull these moves with this curve was a bit frustrating to say the least. When Brett Hull played, he wasn't going around pulling these types of moves. He was just going in and he was ripping shots, so that's fair. The curve is supposed to make it easier for what you want to do, so if you're a dangler, this is not your curve. If you're a shooter, then sure, by all means go for it. We'll be right back after this special announcement. going about my day filming my reviews and you see that guy skate through my shot on the left side there okay there's two ice rinks here there's one where I'm on in this end completely out of everyone's way and there's another full rink for where someone can skate on I don't even have the net in my end it's in the complete opposite end so I'm not bothering anyone and then I have some pucks that are sitting at the red line there okay so that's the background so I'm minding my business, trying to film some curve reviews for the boys, trying to go get McDonald's after I'm done as a reward, and then just watch this. This guy just starts taking laps, and then he pushes all my pucks back through the middle of my shot, and he won't stop skating through the shot. So after he pushes all these pucks through, keeps interrupting me, I'm like, man, what are you doing? Then this mid-40s man comes over to me and he's like, do we have a problem here? He's really trying to scrap out here on a Thursday morning at 9am. 
Now, if I was from New Jersey, I would have thrown my mitts down, I would have had a very public fight with this guy that probably would have ended up going viral, but I don't have nearly enough hair gel, spray tan, and I'm not wearing a sleeveless shirt, so I couldn't really do that. Plus, by the way this guy looks, and the fact that he's out here on a weekday morning at 9am, I'm assuming he doesn't have a job and he has nothing to lose. So again, I'm just out here, I'm trying to get these reviews filmed for the boys, I'm trying to go get McDonald's breakfast when I'm done, but he keeps shooting these pucks through, he keeps skating through my shots, but again, I'm not trying to fight anyone, just trying to skate, just trying to eat some McDonald's, you know, let him do his thing. But for his actions, this man has earned the title of the Bozo of the Year, so please drop your comment congratulating him on this prestigious award. Although he did earn the title of the Bozo of the Year, he's not going to throw my game off. I continued filming for the boys, I kept getting these dangles done, and I already told you what I thought. It's a wedgy curve, it's not great for dangling. End of story. Ho. Oh, big shooter. Big one-timer guy. Let's see how the curve works. This curve, with that amount of wedge, as you'd expect, is a great one-timer curve. Pretty much everything I was taking was going off the bar, going off the post, going where I wanted. You have a lot of power behind your shots. Everything about this for one-timers is great. Would I put it up there with the OV and the line curve? I think so, but it's maybe just one step down. Those two are goaded, in my opinion. They can't be touched, but this comes pretty close. Definitely better than a P92, but just not quite at that level of the line A and the OV curve. This curve is built for shooting and it does it really well, but there's a specific style you need to use and I don't really like that. I like a more versatile curve, but it's definitely better than a P92. I'm going with an 8.1 out of 10 for shooting. Saucer passes, decent amount of loft, got some good hang time on these, but overall I prefer a P92. I'm going with a 7.9 out of 10 for saucer passes. The blade shape's good for stick handling, but the curve's nothing special, I'd say 7.6 max. The angling score may be influenced by the bozo, but like I said, it's a lofty curve, not a lot of hook to it. I'm going with a 5.1 out of 10, it's just not that fun for dangles. One timers are really solid, they rise up quickly, it's definitely better than a P92, it's just not at that elite level of the line A and the OB curve, I'm going with an 8.3 out of 10 for one timers. With an 8.1 in shooting, a 7.9 in saucer passes, 7.6 in stick handling, 5.1 in dangles, and an 8.3 for one-timers. The total average score for the whole curve is a 7.4, making it the lowest scoring curve on our lineup for this season. That doesn't mean it's a bad curve though. Hull used this for a reason. He was very specialized in his talent. He was a pure shooter. If you are a pure shooter, I'd definitely try the line A curve first, but if that's a bit too much of a hook for you, this is a great option. So it does have its place for the right person. Pure shooters, again, not too much dangling, just straight up one-timers, slap shots, wrist shots, snap shots. If that's what you're about, then this might be the curve for you. Last thing, I just want to show you guys the beta version of our customizer that'll be going live in a few weeks. You'll be able to order single custom sticks, so no more minimum order of five sticks. You can just order one. You can customize all your specs on there. You can choose from our 30 plus curve options. You can choose whatever grip option you want, kick point, shaft shape, the stripe color. You can put your name bar on there. Basically full customization, but with no minimum order. You see the price tag there is $179, so the prices for customized sticks are going to go up next year. For the first few weeks of the launch as a promotion, I'll still be charging $159 for the sticks, but due to the high level of customization, eventually we do need to charge more. However, if you don't want to pay that price tag, we are still going to have inventory coming in all the time for the lower cost, but if you want a curve or a flex option that we don't normally offer, or if you just want your name on there, whatever it is, this customizer is another great option that we want to offer to you guys. So thanks for watching. I'll keep you guys up updated on the launch of the customizer coming soon, ProStockHockeySticks.com. Thanks for watching.